The Earth lost 97% of its population due to solar storms, leaving only 21 million survivors worldwide. Only one city remains habitable, protected by anchored zeppelins that create artificial clouds to bring rain. As humanity decides to gather in this city, the robotics company Caladruck creates the Peregrine 7000 automatons, humanoid robots with the ability to rebuild CDs. These robots have two unalterable protocols. They cannot harm any living being, and they cannot alter themselves or other robots. However, they are unable to stop desertification. They are forced to do manual labor and act as servants. One night, the policeman Wallace finds a robot repairing itself. He is surprised and ends up shooting the robot. In the next scene, Jock, who is the investigator from Iraq, is investigating a case involving a robot accused of eliminating a dog. After Jack conducts some tests and discovers that the robot is functioning properly, he returns home to his pregnant wife, Rachel Vaucan, who thinks that after their child is born, they should get a domestic robot. However, Jock can only think about the beach he used to visit as a child. Moments later, Jock is called by the police morgue to inspect a robot. Jock can't believe that the robot was found repairing itself, but the forensic technician shows that the robot has been completely modified. The technician hands over the core to Jock, and explains that, based on what was found, the unit was altered to smuggle some tools and parts, and also mentions that this unit is without the second protocol. The next day, Yock tells his boss, Robert Bold, about what he has discovered, and his boss also doesn't believe that a robot without the second protocol is possible. So, Jacques says he's tired and wants to be transferred to the coast, but Robert refuses and wants Jock to solve this problem. After tracing the serial numbers of the self-repairing robot, Jock reaches the wall that separates the city from the desert and suspects that one of the workers may have made the alterations. One of the workers tells Jock that these parts belong to Unit 206, which is still operational. When Jock checks the charging station, Unit 206 appears and observes him, prompting Jack to decide to follow it. After passing through a door with a broken lock, Jock arrives at the ghetto on the other side of the wall, which is a restricted area, and anyone passing through will be shot. Suddenly, Jock is under fire from the guards he manages to escape and hides inside a container. Inside this container, he finds 206 holding a box, and when he goes to ask, suddenly the robot catches fire. The robot is then taken to ROC laboratories to be examined. This robot is also smuggling tools and parts, and also possesses a nuclear battery that could power any robot. They manage to turn on the unit once again, but when Jock starts asking some questions, the robot's circuits burn out. Robert becomes irritated and thinks the whole problem is Jack's fault. Robert agrees to transfer Jack if he can provide evidence that a watchmaker is bypassing the second protocol. Upon returning home, Jock breaks the news to Rachel, but she doesn't like the idea and asks him to leave her alone. Jock visits the area where the first robot had been shot and finds a hidden bag with a nuclear battery inside. The next day, Wallace agrees to help Jock find the watchmaker, but he has to split the profits from the battery on the black market. So they visit a place and there they encounter Cleo, a robot modified to be intimate with humans. Wallace is startled by this, shoots Cleo, and leaves. Jock says Wallace shouldn't have done that, but Wallace says he did it on purpose because Jock can wait for Cleo to be taken to the watchmaker and then follow them. Wallace threatens Jock and says he wants the money that was promised. Jock follows Wallace's plan and tails Cleo's owner to the place where she is repaired. Upon arriving, he encounters Dr. Susan Dupre, who says it wasn't her who modified Cleo. Before leaving, Jacques leaves the burnt robot core with her and says that if she finds out who modified it, he will give her the nuclear battery. Jacques sends a report to Robert about what he learned, but the message is intercepted by Rock, and the report reaches the head of security, Vernon Conway, who takes it to the CEO, Dominic Hawk, who orders Conway to handle the matter. Jacques receives two messages, one from Arak informing him that the case has been closed and that he must return the core, and the other from Dupre saying she found something. Jacques goes to meet her at her laboratory, where he finds Cleo repairing herself because Dupre combined the damaged core with hers. The conversation is interrupted by the arrival of two children who shoot Dupre and also go after Jacques. He manages to escape through the back door and gets into a car, thinking it's his driver, but it turns out to be Cleo driving. Other cars pursue them and start shooting. They reach the desert, where the two cars crash into a maze of stakes. The other guys die, and Jacques is injured. The next morning, Jacques wakes up and asks for help from Cleo, who leaves before hearing him. However, she returns after a while with three other robots. They put Jacques in a car seat and drag him through the desert. Jacques orders the robots to take him back to the city, 
but they respond that it's impossible and that they will take him to a safer place. Realizing that the robots don't obey human orders, Jock tries to escape, but the robots follow him to provide protection. Jock faints again, and the robots put him back in the seat, give him worms to eat and build a condenser to collect water for him to drink. At this moment, Jock discovers that the robots saved many things from the cars, one of them being the nuclear battery. Meanwhile, in the city, Rachel's bag ruptures and she goes to the hospital. Hawk and Conway are talking to Robert, saying that Jock is responsible for the altered robots. However, Robert doesn't believe it and thinks Jock is loyal to the company. Back in the desert, Jock asks Cleo for the bag of saved items. He finds a flare gun and a guard and uses his pager to send a message to Robert before the battery runs out. Robert sees the message and sends Wallace to rescue Jock. Wallace and Ellis drive to the desert and Jack manages to see their car. He fires the flare gun to indicate his location. Upon arrival, Wallace gets out of the car and hits Jock. When he grabs the battery and hands it to Ellis, the robots ask him to stop but Wallace starts shooting at them. He manages to eliminate two and when he's about to shoot Cleo, Jock shoots him with the flare gun. Ellis gets scared and flees in his car. After realizing that the robots won't carry on with the seat anymore, Jock saves some items in Wallace's pocket and follows the robots. Moments later, Jock tells them that he has another battery and he'll give it to them if they take him back to the city. Cleo says that the next day they will reach their destination and maybe he will find some vehicle there. Back in the city, Hawk and Conway arrive at Robert's house and take him to Arok to hear Ellis's report. Hawk explains that the first robot was a quantum brain without security protocols, but as it became too intelligent, it no longer needed humans and the last task this unit received was to program the two current protocols, which is why nobody can break them. Robert is sent to the desert with Conway and other police officers to eliminate Jock and prevent the robots from evolving beyond human understanding. The next day, Jock and the robots arrive at a factory and find the watchmaker responsible for the alterations, who is surprised to discover that it's another robot that evolved on its own. Upon entering the factory, he finds all the smuggled parts on a table. After Jock leaves to search for a vehicle, the robots start working to build a model, but they are missing the delicate piece, which is the nuclear battery. Jock finds a car outside, but it's destroyed. Losing hope, Jock approaches a cliff and the robot watchmaker joins him. After a brief conversation, the robot says they want to go to the radioactive area where humans cannot reach, but they need something to achieve that. Jock understands and hands over the nuclear battery. At dusk, Robert's team finds Wallace and decides to wait. Conway then receives a message saying that two women will join them. Moments later, a car arrives with Rachel and her newborn daughter. Robert refuses to use Rachel as bait, and when Conway stops him from leaving, Robert shoots him in the shoulder and in return is shot. After a moment of drinking and dancing with Cleo, Jacques watches the others finish the creation. They breathe life into a type of robot resembling an animal. The robots repair the car for him and Jacques, and before leaving, Jacques thanks them. On the way, he needs to stop to vomit, and it's then that he notices scavenger birds flying around leading him to find Robert. Robert accuses him of betrayal and says they have Rachel. Conway and his team arrive at the factory and shoot at the robots. When the watchmaker robot refuses to follow orders, Conway shoots him and is ready to destroy Cleo too. Suddenly, Jock arrives with the car and they shoot at him, but he keeps driving. Meanwhile, Rachel grabs a knife and attacks, allowing her to escape. Jack manages to hit two men with the car and shoots a third with a shotgun before rushing into the factory. While Conway is distracted by the animal-like robot, he also enters the factory. Upon finding Jock, he accuses him of betraying his own people, but the animal-like robot appears and pushes him from above. Jack grabs the shotgun, thinking he'll have to defend himself, then Rachel and the baby appear. Jock helps Cleo and the animal-like robot to reach the other side of the cliff, and after bidding farewell, he and his family reach the coast. The film prompts us to reflect on the dangers of unchecked technology and the relentless pursuit of progress. While technological innovations can bring unimaginable benefits, they also carry the potential to unleash unpredictable and even catastrophic consequences. Ultimately, the film leads us to question not only the future of artificial intelligence but also our own role as creators and guardians of the world we inhabit. In a universe where machines can become self-aware, we are confronted with the responsibility to ensure that our creation does not turn against us, but rather helps us build a more promising future for all humanity. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications to receive upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.